Let me hit record. Okay. Hitting. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Astrology for the People. And uh, I'm James. And I wanted to introduce my special guest today, Noah Lakshmi, who is a brilliant astrologer and uh, my current uh, like space holding priestess for this Born to Prosper course that I'm in, which is about uh, stepping into your prosperity uh, as a human being and that you were born to prosper and, and healing your relationship with money. <clears throat> And uh, I wanted to share uh, Noah's um, wisdom with you guys today. And also we wanted to make this joint video together about Uranus and Taurus because Uranus, the planet of awakening and uh, rebellion and just blasting into the future, opening the third eye, uh, which has been in the sign of Aries for the last most of the last eight years has just moved into Taurus. And it is an exciting shift in our consciousness and in some of the themes that we can expect to be seeing on the planet at this time and in our personal lives. So um, I just wanted to start by welcoming you, Noah, uh, to Astrology for the People. <laughs> and, Hello, uh, Astrology for the People. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to, actually, my first question for you is, how did you come up with the name Noah Lakshmi? Obviously, Lakshmi is this Indian goddess of, of uh, my understanding is its right relationship with money and with finances. Um, and how did you land on this name? And tell me a little bit about your journey. Oh, that's great. Thank you for that question. So first, I'll start with my first name, which is Noah. And that's my given name. I was born in Israel. It's spelled N-O-A. And in Hawaiian, it means to be free. And that really, really describes who I am and mm -hmm. the, the work that I offer as well. And the financial piece is just uh, one piece of our freedom. But to, be, to live a life of freedom and financial freedom is a big piece of it. And mm -hmm. Lakshmi, which is the goddess of prosperity, abundance, and well-being. Um, and she's actually right behind me right there, if you see with all the other stuff. Lakshmi is holding mm -hmm. it, up, it down. Um, so she came to me. I... Um, I was about to embark on a journey. I was living on Maui at the time mm -hmm. and I hadn't left the island for over a year. It was the longest I've stayed without going to the mainland. And I was about to go to the mainland. It was a big, big step for me. And it was a big journey ahead of me. And I was um, playing with some cards, some goddess cards. And it literally just dropped on my lap, the Lakshmi card. And in that moment I knew, Oh, I, I need that name to be a part of me. Hmm. And I started, I just started calling myself that as my last name. And then 2015, so almost four years ago, I changed it officially. So all my documents, everything is hmm. Lakshmi. Legally Lakshmi. Legally Lakshmi. I like it. Yeah. How has that been for you? So like as someone who's also changed my name to something that was like, I'm sorry to like, you know, disillusion anyone, but I, I was not, Panther was not my given last name. Um, and I never really expected to change my name. Um, and yet it seems like I hit this juncture in my life in 2012 when it was like more than patrilineal, <laughs> you know, conditioning and ancestry, like holding on to that and like constantly naming myself this it seems like this is an aspect of my psyche that I need to integrate more and something that kept showing up for me. And uh, I noticed a lot when I look at that, like look at when I made that change and started to call myself that and ask other people to call me that and start to do that on my social media. I do realize that the content of, you know, who I was and who I was being began to change. And I wonder when you started to take the name Lakshmi, what started to change in your life, if anything? That's awesome. Um, I feel that the name change first for us helps us to embody that which the name carries. Mm -hmm. So whatever Panther was for you, whatever it symbolized for you. And for me, Lakshmi is first of all, just embodying the goddess. There's so many different goddesses and each goddess carries a different energy and it's a different archetype. And ultimately, we all have all of those goddesses and gods within us, just like astrology, right? The planets, the, 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 mm -hmm. the signs, those are all archetypes that we all have. And 
<clears throat> Lakshmi, changing the name to Lakshmi for me, and especially because Maui was such a, it's such a, it was such a catalyst for me to embark on the feminine journey and receiving more of that feminine energy in my life because I've got South Node conjuncts Mars. <laughs> I'm where the masculine energy is pretty familiar to me. Yeah. Uh, and it was, although my son conjunct Venus, um, but that's part mm. of my journey here is to mm. embody more of the feminine and what does that look like? And um, mm. what is the, you say the purpose of the, of the goddess on, on the planet at this time. So yes. that was a huge catalyst for me with em embarking on this journey and taking the name Lakshmi. Mm is embodying more of the goddess. And now things are starting to reveal more um, around the born to prosper and making that body of work something I'm really dedicating myself to freeing people financially and mm -hmm. giving that gift of Lakshmi of abundance and prosperity and, and well-being kind of standing for that and helping people to attune to that vibration, that frequency. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, culturally, it's so interesting, you know, like I'm from New Jersey and <laughs> people calling themselves goddess names and spirit animals <laughs> is like not really a thing. Um, and, and so it's just, it's, it's been so interesting for like those aspects of my ego to just like, get challenged and you know like some of them have just died and yet I still part of my intention for astrology for the people is like I think one person a few years ago gave me a reflection of like oh you're like you're like blue collar working class astrology and I mean that as a compliment and I was like I, I kind of like that though like I I want to I want to talk to that person in Jersey who's like super skeptical about astrology and so I, I know for me, like when I start, you know, get out to the West Coast, I'm in Portland now, and I spent a lot of time in Southern California, and certainly, you know, following ayahuasca medicine people around and, you know, uh, going to Costa Rica and, you know, all these things, and you get exposed to, you know, I don't, where, where are you from? Are you from Israel? I was born there, yes. And then, and then Hawaii, I mean, man, I can only imagine that just... Well, I actually moved to New York, so I was in New York for seven years, and then Maui. <laughs> So you know, yeah, you know. Um, I know the East Coast for sure. Uh -huh. And that kind of frame of mind. And I know for me, like there have been aspects of my ego that, you know, when I was changing my name to Panther, you know, like it was such a strong ego resistance. Like who the hell do you think you are calling yourself a spirit animal, you know? Or like who, who do you think you are calling yourself like a goddess name? But I love the way that you described it almost like that we're all comprised of these archetypes. We're all comprised of God, goddess energies. They are, they are these archetypal energies, whether you're interacting with them as like, this is a goddess in real time in my room, <laughs> or like, this is just a facet of the whole collective human experience that I'm choosing to align myself with and intend to carry that vibration rather than like, I think I am the goddess. And yet, then we get into self-worth, right? Into our patriarchal conditioning, just that even that narrative of like, who do you think you are? You're not a goddess. And yet part of embodying the divine feminine and standing for that, I think so much in, in what I'm learning from your transmission in the Born to Prosper course uh, and just aligning with that, you know, Venus square the nodes, <laughs> my North node in Taurus, you know, stuff within myself that is so much about stepping into a healthy worthiness um, in it, like in the name of the goddess, right? Like in the name of the divine feminine and, and how we are conditioned so intensely. And maybe this is a good segue to start talking about Uranus and Taurus, but we're so intensely conditioned in our society to kind of downplay our worthiness or to not even, almost not even know what it feels like to fully claim and fully embody and fully experience that. Um, and the, thousands of years of patriarchal conditioning like you are not worthy unless you are highly functioning in the way that we have prescribed and your logic brain is super developed and you have this you know resume and you know it looks this way and it's this energy of needing to prove yourself and so I, I would imagine I wonder what you think about this um, with this Uranus moving into Taurus kind of like us you know, at the same time as Pluto is in Capricorn and we've got the South Node and Saturn there this year as well, the Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto conjunction next year in Capricorn, which I keep talking about on my channel, 
I'm sure you do too, um, is like as patriarchy is being challenged and crumbling and now we have this Uranus and Taurus, like I would, I would think that this would be a time for us to really awaken to the goddess within, to the, to the depth of what it means to be connected to the feminine and worthiness and taking responsibility for that. Um, and if that means calling your, you know, calling a goddess lineage, you know, into your, into your namesake or whatever, um, it's like, go for it, man. What are we waiting for? Yeah. You just, you nailed it. Every single thing that you said, and it's truly regardless if you choose to, um, adopt a, a goddess name or a spirit animal it doesn't matter if it resonates with you go for it i never thought that i would change my name no but when the moment came it was so clear to me it, right. it was really beyond me just like recently i added the name gaia as my middle name because i never had a middle name and that yeah. literally came through I, I was in the middle of a session really deep bodywork session and i heard gaia lakshmi as clear as day. And at first I thought, whoa, am I going to, I love Noah so much and it represents who I am. And then I, after a couple of days of feeling into it, I said, oh, wait a second. I don't have a middle name. Mm -hmm. Of course, Noah, Gaya, Lakshmi and those three together exactly represent who I am and what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. So that's a very subjective thing. If you choose to change your name or not, however, what you were talking about the piece of self-worth and to know yourself, to know that you are that God, you are that goddess. That's a big piece of that awakening to your own self-worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yet um, how to hold that without uh, over-inflation of the ego, I think is a really important thing to hold. You know, how do, how do you hold right relationship and right-sizedness and humility with inviting a, a higher more divine vibration into your life and and how do you i think maybe perhaps then it, it becomes about sharing you know how do we claim our own worthiness and really stoke the fires of you know invite everyone else to be the same it's not that which is i think maybe part of the the crumbling uh, hierarchy of of patriarchy and, and that that old capricorn energy like my strong worthiness does not diminish or take away from yours. And I think we have so many, I, I think it'll be such an interesting time with this Uranus and Taurus, dismantling some of our beliefs about what does it mean if I step into greater worthiness or, or financial abundance or wealth, that, then that means it's taking away from someone else. I mean, there's a lot of scarcity thinking, poverty consciousness, victim consciousness in reaction to all that is corrupt in our financial system. There's so many well-worn pathways in so many people's minds of like, well, I, who do I think I am? I can't step up and be that because then I'm, I'm diminishing someone else around me. It's kind of, um, that's part of why I kind of got, got the little Scorpio tattoo on my fingers because it rules my whole chart. And, you know, even though I'm not a Scorpio son, but I know you have like strong Scorpio signature. And I think that 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 connection to power you know scorpio also the opposite of taurus pluto moving through capricorn you know what is what is power and you know that saturn capricorn as well responsibility look like how do we take responsibility for being in our own power and also empowering others as as we go like it's it's such a new i would say you know a new model is emerging kind of now slowly through our or, or rapidly through our own third eyes you know through our own individual consciousness and uh, i would imagine that this uranus taurus time as well is so much about you know uranus being the ruler of aquarius and social groups like almost like we've got to keep coming together to kind of share what we're getting so that we kind of co-create this future where wealth and prosperity and abundance does not diminish someone else's but it actually enhances someone else's and like to to hold that ideal to hold that intention mm -hmm. what do you think about that well yeah and that's a the, that's the whole new paradigm that we are shifting into and i i, I believe we're going to see a lot more of that especially when saturn moves into aquarius in 2021 or at the end of 2020 
while mm-hmm. uh, Uranus is still in Taurus, right? Yes. So we can talk about that in just a moment. But what I want to say, which is really important to me, and you were you were asking about the ego, and I know that that's a, a that's a very sensitive um, point for many spiritually oriented individuals. Well, who am I to be this and that, or the inflation of the ego? But what if actually playing that small little speck of dust, powerless, um, who am I to be, da la 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 la, that's actually, that's the ego that is wanting to keep you separate from life, the totality of life, the magnificence of life, and to keep you in a small little prison cell where you are, you, where you are safe. Mm-hmm. And actually you coming out and claiming I am a God, I am a goddess, I am all of creation. That's actually not an egoic thing. That's your soul knowing exactly who it is that you are Mm -hmm. and you're not afraid to express it. And it's really, really true because we do see the, the, let's say distorted expression of ego, inflated ego, where, if I shine my light, if I am wealthy and prosperous in all areas of life, that's going to diminish you because we've seen that power play happening in our society and the 1% right of society is on top and the rest is like crumbs. And that's the kind of paradigm that we are shifting out of where every single individual actually steps into their power, not from an egoic place, but from knowing who you are. That's a healthy ego. Mm-hmm. And then that gives others the permission to do the same. And there's no competition. There's actually the more powerful you are, mm-hmm. the more powerful that I am, then we can actually come together and create something very, very substantial. Right. And it's the resistance to claiming that power that keeps, that keeps the, it's part of what keeps the 1% so powerful and, and prevents exactly. us from, uh, shifting out of that paradigm. I think it takes for sure. I mean, I, uh, a groundedness and a reclamation, you know, of your own power, which is, which is not how we're necessarily socially conditioned at all and, and not how our parents were conditioned and their parents. I mean, we're breaking so many uh, cycles. It can be overwhelming, but it feels like you're going completely against the grain and almost this, it, it can feel so unfamiliar to really claim power and say like, this isn't how I want to steer this ship right now. This is, I'm actually going to steer this in a different direction and to not, um, I, I talk a lot about on my channel, like not feeling gaslit by, uh, you know, patriarchy and the, those social programs to not get confused and how challenging that can be because we have so much built in, like, as you say, ego resistance and, you know, this is no, 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 this is how you've got it. You got to be small. Otherwise you don't fit in at the, you know, at the bar or at the workplace or wherever you are and into your social group. And, um, yeah, to really, uh, get used to the discomfort that, uh, you know, and, and added responsibility uh, to create the life that you want that, that comes with a reclamation of power, because then it's not, uh, everything isn't happening to you. You're out of that victimhood, um, which the victimhood I think is, is really interesting to go into a little bit just because it can be so, so subconscious and so subliminal and so old that we don't even realize that we're in victim when we're in victim. You know, hundred percent. Yeah. And I feel that that was a big shift that we experienced with the Chiron moving into Aries completely, mm-hmm. you know, after, after the little dip, it went into Aries, right. And then it went back into Pisces. And then we just came out of that uh, yeah. a month ago. So that, that was the, to me, I saw that as the, the, the final healing of that victimhood consciousness mm-hmm. and all those unconscious ways that we become a victim because the last eight years we've been really healing that. Right. Right. And yet now, uh, when this, you know, as we record this video for those of you who might watch it at, at whenever we're in the middle of the Mercury retrograde in, in late Pisces, which is where Chiron has, has been for the last little while. So it's almost like we're getting this left brain, like totally. sweep and cleanse, you know, and like, uh, just like wiping out, like, I mean, the, the amount of resistance, I, I love the way that you talk about resistance. It's so great. Cause I find, you know, some people want to go all the way into the resistance and just like never remember to positive focus. And some people 
are so positive focus heavy that they're like, well, you shouldn't be feeling resistance. And there's almost this like subtle, like shaming or spiritual materialism vibe, you know, from people about resistance and not knowing how to work with it, not even acknowledging or accepting it when it's such a huge reality. I love you talking about how it's so important to love resistance when it comes up because it really is just another aspect of self that needs love that maybe doesn't believe in all the affirmations that you're you know spouting at it <laughs> because of its its unique life experience and i'm experiencing this pisces retrograde as being this i mean starting a degree away from where chiron has just moved to aries at the last degree of the entire zodiac <laughs> which is already sweeping the the floor for you know the next act but to bridge chiron back to neptune and which is, I mean, the ruler of Pisces and all that is and everything. And it, it is one of the most epic, you know, chaotic, powerful, you know, uh, deeply spiritual learning, you know, learning of the heart, learning of the crown, learning about forgiveness. I was just mentioning to my patrons the other day that, uh, you know, Brene Brown in her book, Rising Strong, talks about how you know, in her research about forgiveness, that forgiveness actually means there needs to be a death and there needs to be a grief process. Otherwise, forgiveness is sort of like a byproduct of that deeper inner work. And we're in this cleansing time at this time, you know, uh, I think wrapping up so much of that old victim consciousness and, and having this beautiful opportunity at least to do so, you know, astrology is free will and we do with it what we're going to do with it. You could also shoot up heroin and try to, you know, leave <laughs> early if you want right now, but <laughs> that's not what we're recommending. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's such an, a possibility, I think, to have a very productive spiritual cleanse of where Chiron has been digging up a lot of stuff that needs to heal around, you know, victim consciousness so that when Mercury finally finishes and moves into Aries in mid late April, we're really like ready for that new healing cycle. Yeah, it's so, oh, it's amazing what you just said. I love, Jane, I just love the way you speak, the way you articulate, everything is so spot on, the way you explain astrology, it's, it's, it's lovely. And I really seeing this Mercury in retrograde in the area that it's, it's, it's cleansing right now, like you said, there's um, an element I feel just mentally for us as individuals that we are getting a deeper understanding on a mental level of the last eight years. Mm -hmm. and all those subconscious beliefs and all the ways that we choose to become a victim. We are seeing the deeper meanings of all that and getting an understanding and connecting the logical mind with what is very deep and spiritual. And I feel that that's, that's very helpful um, for us in order to integrate all those spiritual awakenings because we can have all those great spiritual awakenings but if the if not all parts mm -hmm. of ourselves are actually aligned and in tune with those spiritual awakenings and understandings then it we just keep on going repeating the same thing so there's mm -hmm. obviously nothing is a coincidence nothing is random that mercury is being in is in retrograde exactly in that area so right. we can align our mental understandings with all these spiritual awakenings that we've experienced in the last eight years and definitely just the last six months since the last eclipses in August. Yes. And what, what is occurring, James, you were talking about the lineages and breaking free from, from generations of, and cycles. We are literally, and that's also the intensity that we are feeling the, uh, during these times, we are changing our DNA. Mm. Literally, the DNA, the, the structure of our DNA is being completely changed. I'm curious uh, if you could elaborate a little bit on that piece, the, the changing of the DNA, because I hear people say that, and I, to part of my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds great, you know, I, <laughs> I with like a lot of ayahuasca, you know, like I, I think I, I've probably been changing my DNA, maybe that's why I've been clashing with my family so much. Probably. Um, but but um, I'm like a panther now, you know, um, but but to, to like the lay person, like what the fuck does that mean? What do you mean you're changing our DNA? Like how does that even, you know, like what are, what, um, what are you referencing, you know, in your, in your studies and in your, your body of wisdom and knowledge when you say that? Yeah, well, I see us humans and consciousness as a computer program, mm -hmm. right? And um, 
any computer uh, or any software, there's specific codes for that software to run in the way that it's in the way that it runs. Right. And if you wanted to change, um, this is just like simple tech stuff. If you wanted to change your website, you take it to your uh, tech guy and he does some decoding and he changes the code. Mm -hmm. And by changing the code, you actually change the layout and things start and things then look different. And if you need to change um, uh, an operating system, you just change the codes to switch it into a new operating system. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I see the whole DNA restructuring and changing. We are actually, um, we are being downloaded new codes. We are imprinting ourselves with new codes so things actually start to look different. They start to feel different. We start to operate differently mm -hmm. because we are carrying codes from our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Your DNA is obviously connected to the DNA of your parents and your grandparents and those that came before, before them. Mm -hmm. And so with all this deep spiritual soul work that we've been doing, it's not just affecting us spiritually, it's actually affecting us even on a physical level mm -hmm. where our DNA, our physical DNA is starting to shift because there are new codes yeah. that we are being imprinted with. Yeah, and, and to me, that all still sounds really like abstract because it's like, how do you measure that? You know, like, how do you know whether you Well, that's, like a, that's a great question. That's a great question. But how do you know it? Look at your life. Look at what's happening. Look at how mm -hmm. you are operating now uh, compared to 10 years ago. Do you think it's kind of a universal DNA shift for people? Or do you think that like, it's more about those who are sort of more, more open to those higher... Uh, vibrational frequencies awesome question so like you said earlier there's a free will and it's this is based on your choices so I believe that there is this universal soup and the collective consciousness is is just an entity in itself mm -hmm. and there's a lot of changes and a lot of transformation that is happening within the collective consciousness yet each and every one of us is a cell within this body of life with its own intelligence Mm -hmm. And so it is your free will of how you choose to interact with, mm -hmm. with all these, with, with, with these intense waves of evolution. Cause like you said, right now, there's definitely a choice point. You can go and, and, and get numb and shoot heroin, or you can actually open yourself up spiritually and go to a, a new dimension to the big cosmic waves. And I think that actually what you were saying just now is it, this, this uh, piece of the conversation, oh, we're opening to new codes. I mean, that is, that is Uranus, right? Like that is, that's not very Saturnian, you know, just, you know, to translate for my viewers, like Saturnian being like the kind of limited third dimensional, you know, density and matter we will, we are in, you know, uh, the third dimension, our bodies live in the third dimension. Ultimately, we need to answer to gravity. <laughs> you know, we need to answer to the aging process. We need to, you know, like there's, there's a, you know, you get certain things in the winter, certain things in the summer, you know, if you live somewhere where there are seasons and, you know, it's, there's a, there's third dimensional law. And what happens is you get from Saturn out to Uranus and Uranus is quite abstract and it really is that <laughs> kind of wide-eyed thing that I just did. Like it's, it's your third eye opening. It's your, it's your co higher consciousness expanding. And whereas, you know, we say in astrology a lot that Uranus is like the higher octave of Mercury, Mercury being the left brain. Um, and you get out into Uranus and it's sort of that personal unconscious and it's, so many potential futures and possibilities and really every potential that exists within you that you could do. And I feel like when Uranus changes signs, it's like our orientation to our higher consciousness shifts from one archetype to the next. So it's been Aries, which is the masculine and desire and individuation and things like this. And Taurus is more the feminine. So, and, and it really, to me, I think, you know, saying our DNA is changing almost there's, 
I would say a, f- a heightened physical embodied intensity to the kinds of downloads that we're getting from Uranus and Taurus because it's Taurus is like physical, you know, matter and it's Venus and it's the earth herself. It is Gaia uh, in a lot of ways, you know, the garden of Eden and um, just, you know, the bowl and just kind of planted and just, (laughs) you know, like, like embodied and, and physical. So it's like the earth herself is getting shaken up. We've seen, you know, last year when Uranus went into Taurus, I think how many natural disasters were there? I mean, there were like wildfires, hurricanes, like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. I mean, we're talking like massive physical, like awakening in Uranus rules, shock and trauma and, uh, you know, anything that's going to shake you out of your your complacency and your slumber so as to awaken, so as to kind of move it forward. So as you're talking about our, our changing DNA structures, I think it's, this is, that's a really interesting, you know, circle back around to Uranus and Taurus, like our physically, our DNA could be changing and upgrading. And yet it's really important with this Uranian stuff to to take the time to integrate and to take the time to really you know, and I think that's part of the beauty of that Mercury Pisces retrograde. Neptune being the ruler of Pisces, one out from Uranus, also a very celestial, you know, like we, we've got to give it time to move through our Saturnian, you know, physical reality so we can really, um, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like you get the new program and then your computer has to adjust to it and you've got to take some time, you know? Right, absolutely, to, to press the reset button and let things... Um uh, get a, be assimilated and I'm, I'm really big like with this whole Uranus and Taurus is because um, I see Uranus as, as, as the one that is associated with our ascension uh, we hear that a lot in the spiritual community ascension 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 it's like okay what the heck does that mean yeah talk about and, it right and I feel that for a lot of people and even when we talk about okay let's go to the next dimension or a higher dimension and of course, that there are many different dimensions beyond this physical dimension that we live in. And that's the beauty and the brilliance about, with be, about being a human is that you can access those other dimensions while being in the body, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what we do in meditation. And that's when we really tap into the inf- infinity of all there is and not so lim- being so limited in this Satur- Saturnian reality. However, when it comes to ascension, I feel many people is like, oh, yeah, it's like I need to leave my body. And that's what ascension is. It's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear and become this fairy dust. And voila, I have ascended. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's Uranus in Taurus is going, is going to wake up um, many spiritual beings, I feel, to the reality of no ascension through the body. Hmm. and accessing higher dimensions while still living in this reality, while still living on this earth. And it's not about just ditching the earth and going somewhere else. It's creating heaven on earth because Uranus is associated with the heavens. And Uranus in Taurus is literally bringing heaven to earth. And how Hmm. do we do that? By using our body as a vehicle for the divine. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of changes and upgrades need to happen, obviously, in order to purify and cleanse these bodies, Mm -hmm. physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yes. And I think that, gosh, I mean, so much is coming to mind, as you just said that, about Taurus. And one of the things that comes to mind is that almost like Uranus is kind of uncomfortable in Taurus or Taurus is really uncomfortable with Uranus, you know? It's it's his fall position. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't even, I I don't remember traditional astrology, but yeah, that makes sense because Taurus, you know, my, I think what I've noticed, you know, studying astrology and studying people for so many years is people with strong Taurus energy or, or Taurus sun people often are the ones to be like, really? with astrology like okay because the constellation and like now i'm like this kind of a person you know like they're just there's so much it's like prove it you know like where is it like show me where i can see it you know it's like dense fixed earth like you know you plant the seeds you got to give it water it's got to have this kind of sunlight this plant can't grow here just like you know come on it is what it is you know cause effect you know earth 
I put Uranus there, the sky god who's so, I mean, you know, the, if, if Taurus is mother earth and Uranus is definitely father sky, you know, or Uranus, you know, you could go into the mythology of Uranus a little bit who, you know, Saturn had to cut his balls off in order to <laughs> humble him <laughs> and kind of take over this planet, you know? Um, but he was, he was this really cold, you know, Uranus is so associated with this really kind of cool, uh, you know, beyond human, not, really feeling not really tapped in very scientific very cerebral kind of not really tapped into the to the heart or the more embodied you know physical experience and so you put uranus and taurus and the planet's like oh shit you know and like how do we like where, where's my you know taurus is so methodical so it's like how do we absorb and fully get through our bodies and into our lives these really intense like kind of like physical cellular you know, world rocking, you know, transmissions, you know, what, what is, what advice do you have or what wisdom do you have about how to navigate these times of, of Uranus moving into Taurus as we're making this transition, you know, functionally in our, in our daily lives? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that, that's bringing so much. And it's also when you were speaking, it brought up the whole shadowy aspect of uh, Uranus and Taurus and what I believe we're going to, going to see in the next seven years is, um, a biological revolution also in terms of, um, you know, getting um, chips into humans and making humans into robots. Uh, and what you were talking about, Uranus being cold, right? It's like, it's a complete opposite of the human with the heart and the feeling and the actual blood flesh and, 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 and starting to move more into machines. Mm. Um, and I feel that there will be this divide in, in society or in humanity where, there will be this complete dissociation with the earth and the physical body. And those of us that are actually um, are awake to the reality, to knowing that this, this body is actually the most intelligent machine mm -hmm. you can ever come up with. And so the Uranus in Taurus mm -hmm. is about us accessing that intelligence that lives mm -hmm. within our bodies, mm -hmm. accessing the human potential because we haven't even gotten close to mm -hmm. scraping the surface. And I'm not saying that technology doesn't have uh, its place and it's actually helping us to discover the human potential, but to not replace humans for you, machines. Yes, using that technology with a heart, you know, like with, with your heart chakra intact and with your 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 wisdom and sort of knowledge of of earthly uh you know divine goddess you know right relationship which i i think then you know if that's the if that's the shadow then the the light would be like wow what a time for for plant teachers and plant medicines and for us to you know as exactly. someone who's journeyed so much with plant medicine to you know mother ayahuasca is such a a beautiful teacher to, to me i i experienced a rewiring of a lot of synapses in my nervous system and in my physical capacity to understand my, my own intelligence and kind of rewire. Like, I don't, you know, you say like, I love the way you talk about astrology, but for me, I didn't have these words, you know, until after sitting with ayahuasca and it, I just sort of was able to get out of the way or something connected to where it wasn't connected before. And it was it, the intelligence. I, I made a, a long form video on my channel about, Virgo actually while the north node was still in Virgo in the spring of 2017 after I had sat with uh, ayahuasca and I had gotten such a clear download about the the intuitive wisdom of our nervous systems and of the body mind which is how I see Virgo it's like the body mind it's like the whole like wow like the whole network and that the earth herself has this intelligence and I think that with with uh there's this hubris of the human ego to think like, Oh, we've got it invented. It's like, you're not even paying attention to what's right here. So there's this, you know, the grandmother <laughs> energy within me wants to be like, now, now, you know, young man, you know, like, like reel it the fuck back in, feel your body, feel your nervous system. You know, the body knows how to heal itself. We have, we, we could really be innovating and maybe even implementing a lot of, you know, uh, 
structural government level, you know, or maybe not government, but like, like activism around uh, the legitimacy of holistic health practices. Like I'm in Portland where my insurance covers a naturopath and a chiropractor and not everyone has that, you know, like that, you know, and I'm, my body is healing so much and I'm, I'm understanding so much and I'm in a very organic, you know, process that takes time because my, you know, my insurance, you know, which is a very Saturnian thing is, you know, covers a holistic level of care. And I think that that's something that could really happen with Uranus and Taurus. You know, we, we can, we can all step it back to stepping into our power. Like we can steer that ship in the direction of like, we want to innovate for, what's already the, the intelligence that's already here to kind of expand on that rather than to feel like we need to outsource to machinery to access the feminine intelligence. I mean, if that isn't Taurus, like, you know, Venus ruling Taurus, the, the intelligence of the feminine, which is an embodied, intuitive, more emotional, more sensory experience, which we've been so disconnected from. So it makes sense that through the patriarchal framework, people would want to well, we got to get robots to do that. It's like, no, 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 no. We're the, we're the ultimate robots. <laughs> Absolutely. And there will be a split. And that was something that was predicted thousands of years ago. There's a Hopi prophecy. And that's exactly what they, what they were talking about, um, mm-hmm. this, this split on the earth. And, uh, and we'll see that. It will just be part of, of the human evolution and, and the, this, mm-hmm. this next decade that is upon us from 2020 to 2030. And I, I really, what I'm envisioning and focusing on the light, and um, I am envisioning how technology is actually going to help us to restore the earth because the soil is so depleted and our food sources, even, even if you eat organic and you eat um, mainly plants and, and, and really keeping your diet clean, the, the quality of the soil is not is not that great. It's just not. The, the earth is depleted. And so technology can really help us to yeah. restore the, the earth. That's what I'm seeing technology coming in in the next decade to help us um, elevate um, the health of our planet. Yes. Uh, you know, people walking around with, with like mineral deficiencies that they don't even know about because we're so like, it's like our bodies are are starving. The earth is starving, you know, for, for certain minerals. And I have, I'm working with one healer right now who has this German technology biofeedback system that basically measures everything that you're deficient in. And then homeopathically charges these little bottles with everything that you need. And I've been having the most cathartic, like healing, you know, experiences emotionally and physically. Um, with these, you know, and, and, and finding exactly which mineral, like I was deficient in manganese or just, you know, things that I don't even know about, you know, and, and using this technology to restore, you know, balance to my, my physical. And I think that it's like, wow, there's, we have, we have a far ways to go for that. And I think that the, you know, Uranus moving into Taurus, you know, the, maybe it's just because I have Aries rising or and Lilith and Aries and have a lot of Capricorn energy that Uranus was squaring over the last, you know, few years that Uranus was in Aries, but it was definitely like a, a warrior vibe of like, yeah, you know, like it was just like full speed ahead kind of energy. And then it's like Uranus moves into Taurus and it's just like, shit, this meat suit really needs some love, you know, like really needs some rebalancing and restoration. So sometimes I don't know if that's just my own personal life or if other people are, you know, feeling that too, of just the, 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 the intensity of, of Uranus and Aries and that need to break free and, and adventure and, you know, define who you are. And now Taurus is like, and here we are, you know, and in, in our exactly. body. Exactly. It's, it's, and, and how do we make that uh, sustainable? Right. You know, after everything that you've experienced in the last seven, eight years and switching so many identities, it's like, who am I? I'm this, I'm that. Oh, I'm this. No, I think I'm that. And it's like, okay, I'm all of this. And finding out, though, which identity, which obviously keeps changing. However, finding that core identity, which is not even an identity, I call it an essence. It's your essence. What is this core essence of mine that now I'm ready to bring forth, plant, 
plant, plant, that. plant that and let it become something that, that sustains me. Mm -hmm. And obviously being a warrior is not sustainable, right? Not full time anyway. Not yeah. full time for sure. <laughs> for yeah. sure. So it's that sustainability. And so we're going to see that um, awakening also to, well, how do I make my life mm -hmm. sustainable on a personal level and then globally? Mm -hmm. And what needs to change? What needs to um, upgrade? What needs to be reinvented in, or, in order for it to be su sustainable, in order for it to, to be beautiful and produce um, fruits and produce beauty? Right. How do we replenish both on a personal level and on a collective level, like to like really to the earth herself? And I love that using technology to kind of figure out how to, you know, replenish one thing that there's there's a lot of consciousness up here in the Pacific Northwest of of um, the mycelial, you know, like the power of, of mushrooms, you know, and, and how the they aid in decay and they really are such a powerful I mean if you've never researched mushrooms I think there's a TED talk about like how mushrooms could save the world and totally it just feels like that I, I almost want to say the mycelial intelligence is I mean it's it's a whole different they're, they're not plants they are mushrooms the fungal kingdom its network of intelligence is so different from the way that plants feel um you know I've, I've obviously like worked with psilocybin mushrooms, but I've also, I also, you know, take chaga and reishi and cordyceps on a daily basis. And just the, their, their intelligence is, I would almost say that they're almost like Uranian in the way that they think and, and communicate with each other and with the natural world and just what their, what their job is, you know, in the ecosystems that are so messed up, but we could really have mushrooms help save the world right now. You know, like that's just another possibility for Uranus and Taurus. Like how do we really get serious and grounded and implement these things? Oh, I love that. And if you think about mushrooms, right? Like Uranus, so weird. There's something weird about them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's not a plant, but it's... What is it? It's just, what is it? Yeah, exactly. What do you mean it eats toxins and then I can eat it as food? Like that's so weird. Yeah. It yeah. Cow feces, and now I'm expanding <laughs> my consciousness with it. Like, it's so oh, Uranus. <laughs> it's it's so Uranus. Oh my God, it's so weird. And like, what? <laughs> oh Out God. of the box <laughs> thinking, like, wow, I'm really going to do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's for me, that's, that's what's up, you know, Uranus and Taurus. Mm. And this is a big part of, of my life and my work also when it comes mm. to fine-tune your body and make your body a mm -hmm. fine-tuned instrument because that the intelligence that lives in every cell in your body um, has to be freed up and how do you free it up you know it's through diet it's, it's through certain exercises that actually open up the channels mm -hmm. you know you you are now in the course that I'm doing the born to prosper and kundalini yoga is a big tool that I use in all the work that I do courses and work with clients one-on-one -on -one because it's technology Yogi Bhajan that brought it to the West back in the 60s, he was a prophet and he could see with all the changes that we are experiencing right now. Mm. And he said, I, he said, I'm bringing this technology to the West to assist these great times of awakenings. Yes, and it is technology and it has a process of its own and an intelligence of its own. And it's mystical and different as, I mean, talk about weird you know kundalini yoga is real weird i was super doing, weird i was doing that you know i would actually i would love to you know i want to say a little quick piece about that but and then turn it over to you to talk more about born to prosper i don't know if you're going to offer it again as a course in the future but i would love people to know more about it and just hear a bit from you about what that entails um but i was sitting doing my my you know prosperity meditation and you know that place where you're you're pulling in your your low belly going huh Hud, hud, hud. Uh, you know, um, H A uh, Hud, which, yeah, had, which means God. It means the God, really. God. So, but I was just my my other friend who I also want to interview for my channel is um, a Kundalini yoga teacher um, and a, a combo medicine practitioner. And she, I was talking to her about. It, I was just like, I think my housemate walked by while I was doing that, and I don't know like what weird sex cult she thinks I'm in now. Because, <laughs> hud, 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 hud. Hud, hud, hud. you know like it's far out you know you start doing kundalini yoga you're like what we 
weird fucking cult did I just join? <laughs> like it's so weird because you just don't see people you know like making those guttural noises but how it's so uranus and taurus to kundalini yoga because uh, like an awareness of that is that is a technology and as a tool like but and to really understand specifically what is it doing because people have different opinions about it and but it, it does really seem to be activating those core primal consciousness energies the realm of sexuality the realm of you know the guttural low chakra place where we've been so like dissociated from that place and shamed out of accessing that place um that kundalini yoga really you know kind of just through, through really like, you know, non-sexual like meditation, you kind of access your, your Kundalini, your, your primal consciousness energy, and you bring it into, you know, really seemingly like kind of heal and clear and expand the potential of your electromagnetic field and release old energies and instigate an awakening process in yourself. And yet it has to be done in a really specific kind of a way. Um, yeah, I, I would love to hear you talk a little bit about what you see as the value of Kundalini yoga and its place in our awakening and also more about your born to prosper course. Yeah. Well, the Kundalini yoga and I, you know, the video that you shared with Teal, Teal Swan, she, that probably one of the best explanations I have ever, ever, ever heard about Kundalini energy. And yes. she, she just breaks it down in such a comprehensive way, at least for me. I know a lot of people are a little intimidated by her, but it's really, there's nothing fancy about Kundalini energy. And I know a lot of people are intimidated by it. Um, and if you put aside Kundalini yoga for a second, if you just talk about what is Kundalini energy, it's your life force. Yes. That's straight up, that's what it is. Nothing fancy about it. It's what gives you life. And I love what she said about you can really activate Kundalini energy because it's already activated. The question is just how much Act, how activated it is how blocked are you how and, blocked are you from that energy to really to move through you and 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 um, show you what your potential is so again we're going back to the human potential and that's what the kundalini energy is and that's why a lot of people have very severe almost scary experiences is when there are a lot of blocks and we can go into that that's a whole video on its own but when you have a lot of blocks and when your nervous system is all fried up from substances, trauma, um, entities, it can be different, different reasons for why people's nervous system is, is either fried or blocked completely. And when, they're, when, the, when the energy system is so blocked, think about like electricity, right? If something is blocked and then you've got this huge surge Right. It's going to create a disaster. And right. so that's what happens for many people that they start moving the Kundalini energy, but there's still a lot of blocks that haven't been addressed. Yeah. And they have very intense experiences physically, mentally, emotionally, all, all of the above. And then they think, oh my God, Kundalini yoga is, is horrible. It's so dangerous. Devil. Yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, no, the devil lives inside of you actually. And you Truth. haven't addressed it yet. Truth. Okay. And, and then the Kundalini comes in and it's showing you the devil. Mm. And then you can't blame the, the, the one that is showing you the devil. Yeah. And so now we're back to, uh, you know, to, to, to me, as you just said, all this, it's like, we're just, we're so not used to living in our Kundalini because we're shamed out of experiencing what the fuck it even feels like exactly. <laughs> to have a free flow of energy from the base of your pelvic floor all the way up through the crown of your head and back down because we have been conditioned to think that that is the realm of the devil. And I mean, God, we could talk about like so many things. I feel like, you know, I got to go to the chiropractor. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> we got clearly have to do another video. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I feel like, it's, it's so much about what are you, what is the ego used to, you know, and just even my, I mean, I'm, I call myself Panther and I drink ayahuasca and, you know, like God knows I've ventured into the taboo uh, in a lot of different ways. But the, even my ego thinking like, God, does my housemate think I'm in a sex cult? Cause I'm doing Kundalini yoga. Like just that, that insecurity that we have of, of being in our fullness, because what is that really? So you had a circle background to, to born to prosper. I, what I'm getting from doing this Kundalini yoga every day uh, at your instruction is um, 
getting used to what does it feel like to just take up more space in yourself? What does it feel like to, to, to really get your, your cells used to it, to get your ego used to it? Like, I'm bigger than I thought I was and it's okay. And I'm, I'm capable of more and I'm able to bring in more prosperity and that's okay. And like, wow, what a, what a profound shift that can be. And so, yeah, you know, um, you were mentioning Teal Swan's recent video of about Kundalini energy, which you guys can find on YouTube. Um, and, uh, and yet it's like, well, yeah, Kundalini is always there, but it's like, yeah, but most people are so blocked around it. So it's like this Kundalini yoga is really this process. And I love that you've implemented it as a tool in the Born to Prosper program um, to, to unstick yourself and unblock yourself. And a lot of times when that happens, big repressed emotions come up and then you're, then you're really dealing with, then it's really how well are you dealing with your resistance? How well are you loving your resistance? which I see so that's so much of what I personally am getting out of your program right now is just like, wow, I might not have even been able to do this week's homework in completion quite yet, but my God, I'm being with my resistance and loving it and letting things move like never before. And things are happening very organically. So I would love for you to take a, a couple minutes before we close and just talk a little bit more about born to prosper and maybe if you're going to offer it again in the future and what people can expect, is it such a beautiful Uranus and Taurus offering? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And actually what I'm uh, going to offer after this, I still may uh, offer the, cause we, what, what James and what we're doing right now is a 40 day course. And um, I am going to offer that just as a download course for people to do on their own. Mm -hmm. And what I'm stepping more into is actually doing a six month uh, program with people. So just like we're doing now, James, uh, 40 days, but it's going to be stretched into six months. Uh, and I work with people one-on-one uh, -on -one for six months and I just want to take a group of people and do a deeper dive and also have the time towards the end of the course, towards the end of the six months to actually implement a lot of the principles for people that want to develop their own business, for people that really want to create something sustainable for themselves. So doing the inner work of, of imprinting all those prosperity codes and then taking the aligned action to create life of prosperity. So um, that's going to be launched probably at the beginning of June. I want that. I yes, want that. baby. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be different modules. And um, it's going to be a mastermind and a full-on, um, not business coaching, but for definitely for individuals that want to create something meaningful for mm -hmm. themselves and um, be of service to humanity and get compensated for it abundantly. Mm -hmm. so that's really what you were born to experience here, mm -hmm. all of us. Gosh, I love that. I love that so much that, uh, yeah. And, um, I love, you know, you, you mentioned several times with your born to prosper course and in the coursework that really this prosperity financially, it's an inside job. I love how you say that. Cause that's, that's, you know, Taurus and Libra are both ruled by Venus and Venus is more, or Libra is more relational. Whereas Taurus is more about that self-worth and just what do you have within yourself and how do you feel about yourself? And so much of our capacity to receive, comes from our worthiness and our worthiness is really colored by our core beliefs. And a lot of our core beliefs are informed by traumas. And so like, how do you really kind of break down? So it's not so abstract. So it's more cl like clear. What is, what is the process of, of stepping into that place where you were like, I was born to prosper and like all the clearing that needs to happen in order to get to that place. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And especially for people that are creatives and visionaries and healers, uh, spiritually oriented individuals that want to be of service to humanity. And they need that bridge between how do I, how do I bring all my visions and all my healing capacities into this physical world in a way that is um, um, sustainable for me. And part of that self-worth is, knowing that you are worthy and it's beyond just being worthy it's your birthright to be compensated and to make a living so to speak from who you are from your gifts what it is that you are talented with no matter what limiting programs still exist in normative culture that's still you know because that's so much of what uranus is uranus is like hey this might not be happening all around me but yeah. I'm claiming that this is the future that I want to be co-creating. And so 
I think that's the, that's the trick, isn't it? I mean, some of us have more Capricorn energy and Saturn influence than others, you know, but for me, definitely in my journey, it's like that sort of compulsive need to be like, well, everyone else doing, am I, am I, am I doing it right? Am I okay? When, when you're kind of starting to implement such a new and innovative program and, um, and yeah, to, to, to be, to, to grow that vibration of being born to prosper, no matter what is happening around you and really kind of holding that down, which is, which is so much of what Uranus and Taurus is about. It's bringing that future transmission, like, okay, well, I'm going to be one of those brave ones planting that in my cells and in the earth around me and in the community around me. And it's like when you're, I think when you're really open to working with Uranus in a good way and in a, in an effective way, it's, you're, you're kind of having, it's like the courage to, to hold that newness vibration to be kind of like a pillar for that. Well, absolutely. And that's what I appreciate about Uranus. It's like Uranus doesn't, doesn't care that he's the weird one. Mm. Like, yeah, I'm going to do things differently. Join me or, or don't. That I don't, I don't give a flying, you know what? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm going to do my thing. And that's the rebel, right? That's the rebellious aspect mm -hmm. of Uranus. And on some level, we are all being asked to be rebels at this time. Right? Be rebellious in a, in a sustainable way. Yeah. Rebel for sustainability, you know? Rebel in the name of, <laughs> you know, in the name of, of health and, and wellness. And health and vitality and a new earth. And I, I want to really emphasize this because I know a lot of people, especially spiritual people, is like, yeah, I rebel against the system. And, blah, blah, blah. and it's not about that. It's actually being in the system, but doing things differently because that's how we're going to change the system. Not by pulling out of it and like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go live in an ashram and check it check out see you later that's not the kind of rebellious spirit that i'm talking about it's about being in the system and doing things differently still maintaining your individual expression and allow that to be the lighthouse allow that to be the guiding light yeah for the system to change right yeah because otherwise because when you're in that and god knows i did it for years um that uh <laughs> f the system you know totally me too what what you resist persists Persist, yeah and so you're you're giving all this energy you're making a, a kai Pacha actually said it to me when he read for me a few years ago he was like rebellion is giving away your power rebellion is like you are real you're powerful i'm against you and it's this like just like waste of you know it's 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 opposite of the law of attraction essentially exactly um, and we want to be tending those parts of us that want to say fuck the system because underneath that anger is usually a transgression that happened in early childhood. And that's what I've learned so much through becoming a completion process practitioner and working with Teal Swan last year and just understanding that like a lot of our angers at what we think we're angry about, we're not actually, it's usually we're angry at mom and dad. We're angry at like some teacher or some kind of trauma that happened when we were little. And there's probably sadness and grief underneath it. And we're so resistant to grief as a society. And there's so much that needs to get cleansed and get out of the way so that the resistance kind of melts with grief, which is such a feminine process of surrender. Um, God, we could just keep talking all day, and I really do have so to So much. Go. You need to go to the chiropractor. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah James. Was, this is, maybe, maybe this can be part one. <laughs> part one. Yeah, I love it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time, Noah. It's been a pleasure to speak with you today, and I'm so glad that um, all my subscribers and anyone who, who comes upon this video in whatever fashion uh, can kind of get the get the good download about this uh, Uranus Taurus you know, potential that we're in, and it's been great to co-create this this download with you today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you so, 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 so much. Cool. All right. Well, um, thank you all for tuning into astrology for the people and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Cool. I stopped my recording. I'll stop.